fellow pen lovers and stationery enthusiasts, it's Christy here, Snarky Wordsworth over on Instagram and Reddit, and today I am going to go over my currently inked for April. I've got nine shades of really beautiful inks in nine equally interesting pens, and hopefully you will find something that catches your eye in this mix that you can add to your own lineups or that you might uh, be interested in trying out yourself. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get to the swatches. Okay, my first pen and ink combo is Birmingham Pen Company's Salt Marsh, which I have inked in my Mayfair Pen Company Vanyar. I am very new to this pen, but I am already really enjoying it, and I think this particular ink looks fantastic in it. And this is the Mayfair Pen Vanyar. I only recently got this and I am already in love with it. I brought it to PLA with me and I have been writing with it nonstop. It's just a really comfortable pen. I will be doing a review of this one, so definitely keep your eye out for that. Okay, I don't know if you can see this with the lighting, but when the ink goes down, it has this gorgeous sort of reddish brown that matches the pen pretty perfectly. And then when it completely dries down, it's going to be this sort of beautiful, almost gray mint green that, again, really, really matches this pen. And of course, once we get to the um, dried down swatch, you'll be able to see much better, but I definitely wanted to draw attention to it while it still has that sort of deeper brown tone going on in it. But I love this color shifting ink. I just, it's so much fun to write with. Like seriously, I just, I just really, really enjoy it. And it's also beautifully wet. I find a lot of color shifting inks do tend towards the dry side, but not this one. This one feels like a really, really comfortable glide in the pen. So definitely keep that in mind. Okay, next up is Color versus Brain from the Glistening line. So this is a beautiful sort of olive -y green with gold shimmer, and it is just chef's kiss. I love this shade. And I have it in my Pilot Prera with a um, CM nib, and it just looks amazing in it. And as mentioned, it is in my Pilot Prera, and this has that CM nib. And this thing is one of my favorite nibs in my collection. I just think it makes my handwriting look so interesting and so cool. But yes, highly, highly recommend it.
Okay, so you can see in the swatch, there's a lot of glitter going on. Now we'll have to wait until it dries down to see if the glitter crossed over, but I will say I am very close to needing to refill this particular ink bottle or this particular pen already. Uh, and we're only you know, a week into the month. I have used this one quite a lot as well. And it's just a really, really fun ink in a really fantastic pen with a phenomenal nib. Uh, so yeah, definitely highly recommended if you happen to like this sort of, um, I don't know how to describe the green. It's not like a day glow green, but there's just something about it. It's not quite olive. It's not bright enough to be like a sweet pea color. It's just really interesting. Um, I think it's a more, it leans a little bit more yellow than say like a goose poupon. So if you happen to like a goose poupon, but maybe you want something a little bit more vivid, this might be a good choice for you. Uh, and then of course, like I said, there is shimmer in it. And if it weren't towards the very end of my fill, we'd probably see a little bit more of it in the actual writing sample. Okay, onward to our next ink, and that is Sailor Manio's Hinoki, another color shifting ink. This one I have got in my Just Turnings Deluxe model, and it is such a good ink in that pen. I am absolutely loving writing with it, and I think you're going to really like this color if you aren't already familiar with it. Okay, here is the Just Turnings Deluxe model that I have the Hinoki inked in, and it just is such a good, good fit for this particular color. Okay, I just really adore this color combo. I think the opal of the um, resin in this particular pen just, there's just a certain glow about this ink and this pen that just, it just fits for me. And while there are little pops of a very similar blue tone in here, but then of course you've got the pink, which you can see periodically throughout the resin. It's just, it's just a really interesting, interesting match. And I am really, really enjoying writing with this duo. Okay, before we get to this next ink, apologies for the slight light shift. I did have to uh, turn on my room light just because I was starting to lose the sunlight. Um, but yeah, so apologies for that, but it is a daylight bulb. So hopefully in theory, it won't be too different. Fingers crossed. Anyway, uh, my next ink is Pilot Iroshizuku Fuyu Syogun. This is, I have said many times, one of my all time favorite inks. It's a beautiful, beautiful shade of gray. Um, and I have this eyedroppered in my Franklin Christoph 45 XLV. Uh, it has a Nagahara nib and it is amazing in it. I just, I love the way a Cursive Smooth Fine looks with this particular ink and that Nagahara just is just such a great, great nib. So let's go ahead and show off the swatch. Okay, here is my Franklin Kristoff 45 XLV, like I said. It does have that Nagahara cursive smooth italic in fine. I adore this nib. I really, really wish I had many other Nagaharas. And for me. now, I'm very happy with this one. It is a wonderful, wonderful writer. And I do think this ink looks amazing with this particular nib.
Okay, and there we have Pilot Orochizuku's Fuyu Syogen. It is such a delightful, delightful blue-gray. I just I just think this is one of the prettiest inks in my collection. Uh, and I think it just is such a great match with this particular pen. Um, I know that I got this in uh, Franklin Christoph's last sort of odds and ends sale that they do at the end of the year where they just have different... Uh, resins that they don't usually have at the at the normal parts of the year and I picked up this uh, black and white creme and I thought it was just absolutely stunning and I'm also super sad that they're going to be I think discontinuing this particular one at least for a while and I love this size pen I just think it's such a good pocket size anyway uh, love the Nagahara nib think that this thing is fantastic if you get the chance to play with one you absolutely need to it makes my writing look really fun and I just enjoy writing with it and this particular ink which is fantastically wet works very well in this particular pen um, it's one of the only ones that I eyedropper and it does work very very well Okay, next up is Troublemaker Petrichor in my Pelican 140. I adore this ink, but it is wicked dry, so just make sure you put it in a fairly uh, sizable nib or a pen that writes particularly wet. My Pelican 140 is an extremely wet writer, so this works just fine in it. And here's my vintage Pelican 140 I was telling you about. This thing is a beautiful, beautiful writer. It is a very wet writer, so it makes working with dry inks wonderful for me because I am already a little bit wary of very wet writers <laughs> since I do have a tendency to write pretty small. So this combo with that super dry troublemaker is perfect. And there you have Troublemaker Petrichor. This is such a fun ink to use in this pen. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of similarity between the Sailor Manu Hinoki and the Petrichor as far as like color shift styles go. It does go from sort of a green tone to like a pink tone, but I think there's much more gray in this and I just love it. Like I said, this one is a bit of a wet writer for me normally, but when I use it with this or any of my other drier inks, it just becomes so, becomes so much fun because this nib is delightful. I mean, you don't have to put much pressure on it and there is line variation, which is kind of nuts to me, but it is one of those really fantastic old fashioned vintage pens that just is an incredible, incredible feat of engineering. It is a fantastic pen and one of the most fun, I would say, to write with. It's just finding the right inks that work well in it. Okay, next up is another Birmingham Pen Company ink. This one is Armadillo, and I have it inked up in my new Esterbrook Esty in the Winter White. I think this ink is just stunning. I, I'm a big, big, big fan of Birmingham Pen Company inks in the first place, but this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous shade. Uh, and I think it's a really good one that works very well with my Esterbrook SD nib, which I have an extra fine. Uh, and I, I'm liking it quite a bit.
Okay, so this is Birmingham Pen Company's Armadillo. I don't actually know if this is the color armadillos come in. I would say from the videos and the photographs I've seen, it does not seem to be that close, but I do really, really like it. Um, so this pops with purples and grays and some greens, and it's just a really, really interesting shade of ink. Uh, and I think really appropriate for April and April showers. And it's a really fun one to use in this extra fine nib. I find this particular extra fine nib to be a very wet writer. So some of Birmingham Pen Company's other inks that I've tried in it so far have been almost too wet for it, uh, at least for my very tiny handwriting. So I was super pleased that this one actually lets me write as small as I want to without having to adjust. And I'm really enjoying this particular one and the shade regardless of uh, biological accuracy. <laughs> Okay, next one up is another shimmer ink. This one is from Ferris Wheel Press and it is Blushing Mushroom. I love this ink and I haven't used it in quite a long time and I have no idea why. Uh, it's quite well behaved for a shimmer and I have this in my gorgeous little Caveco Sport in the iridescent shade and I just, I just think it's such a cute and appropriate match and I think it works really well for April as well. Okay, and there we have Ferris Wheel Press's Blushing Mushroom. Tons and tons of shimmer, but it works really well in uh, even just a medium nib like this. You can see the shimmer all the way through. Again, we'll see more of it once it dries down, but I love this ink. Um, it's got a really gorgeous, gorgeous light purple underneath, but then you can see uh, tons of that rose gold shimmer and then pockets of a slightly darker purple around the edges of the lettering as well. I just really, really enjoy this color and I think it's a great combination with this particular pen. Okay, my next ink is a Sailor Shikiori ink in the Yozakura and this is in my Sailor Shikiori Autumn Drizzle pen with the 21K nib. I am obsessed with the Sailor 21K nibs now. I love the way they write. I love the way your traditional 14 karat sailor pen writes. I love the feedback. I love the feel of it gliding across the page, but there's just something ridiculous and really enjoyable about writing with that 21 K nib. I don't, I can't even put it into words. Anyway, um, I think that this is a great match for the pen and I think you're going to like it too. Here's that Sailor Autumn Drizzle pen I was telling you about with the glorious 21K nib. And I do have this in medium fine.
Okay, so you can see that this Yuzakura is a slightly dusky, pinkish, reddish purple, and I really, really love it. I think it looks really well in this particular sort of matte finished resin here. And it's just, I don't know, a really, really fun ink to write with this particular spring. I'm really enjoying it, and I've meant, uh, written already quite a few uh, journal entries with it, and it just, I don't know, it feels very seasonal. And I don't, I really, really like it. Um, one more thing I hadn't mentioned. So one of the things that I love about the 21 karat nib is that you hear the feedback very distinctly, like you would in any sailor 14 karat nib, but you don't feel it as much. I don't think, uh, and a similar, I had a similar experience with the just turnings deluxe with that fine Mr. Cypress nib. And I do talk a little bit more about it in the unboxing of this. So if you're curious, definitely check into that. But yeah, I, there's something, I love the sound of the feedback of a sailor, but just having a slightly smoother than expected writing experience is, is really nice. I like it. So Definitely keep that in mind if you are thinking about picking up a 21 karat sailor nib. Okay, last but not least is Robert Oster's Chocolate, which is sort of a reddish brown, and I've got that inked in my Esterbrook SD in the Cola Exclusive colorway with my journaler nib. Talk about this nib all the time. Uh, one of my favorite nibs ever, regardless of whether we're talking about stainless steel or gold tipped pet nib depends. I just, I really, really love this nib. So, uh, that's what we've got with this one. Okay, so here is Robert Oster's Chocolate in my Esterbrook SD with that journaler nib. I adore this color, but I do think it's a bit of a misnomer. I don't think of this particular beautiful sort of lush shade of red when I think of chocolate, but you know, maybe there's a different chocolate that I'm not familiar with. In any case, I do think it is quite a nice match for this pen. Uh, and I do think it's just a beautiful, beautiful shade of sort of dusky rose uh, with leanings towards a, a more of a, a Bordeaux or a burgundy. But yeah, if you are looking for this shade, this chocolate is absolutely wonderful. Okay, so I am going to give it about 10 to 15 minutes for everything to completely dry down, and then we can do some close-ups. You can see which inks show off the shimmer better, which ones show off shading and color shifts a little bit more than others, and then I'll have some final thoughts for you, and we will be all done with this video. So yeah, I will be back in just a little bit. Uh, hang tight. Okay, everything is pretty close to dry down, and I have to say I am really liking this color combo for April. Now here is the Birmingham Pen Company Salt Marsh. I'd mentioned before that sort of blend between the browns and the greens, and it really is such a beautiful, beautiful ink. There's Colorverse, their Glistening Line, and Brain. Now, I'm not seeing a ton of the shimmer showing up in the text, which is fairly unusual. But, like I mentioned, I am down to the very last of this particular draw, so... Um, I may have already gone through all of the shimmer in that particular draw because it does usually show up a little bit more, but here in the swatch you can see quite a bit more of that beautiful, beautiful shimmer. Right below that is Sailor Manio's Hineki. Uh, I have this in my Just Turnings Deluxe with that Mr. Cypress fine nib, and it looks amazing. I love how much shading there is, and how it's still super legible even in the lightest patches of this particular ink. Just a really nice ink to play around with. 
Now, below that is my Pilot Iroshizuku Fuyu Syogun. This is a stunning shade of blue-gray. It's in my Franklin Kristoff 45 XLV with that Nagahara Cursive Smooth Italic Fine Nib. Just a real stunner. I love the way my rating looks with this. Strongly recommend that nib. Uh, and this combination works beautifully well with it. There's my super dry Troublemaker Petrichor in my Pelican 140. Perfect, perfect combo with that particular nib and this very dry ink. Everything looks absolutely beautiful. You can see the shading in there. And it's just, it's just a great, great ink. I love it so much. Um, I wish it were a little bit more versatile. If it were slightly less dry, uh, I could probably use it in more pens comfortably. But as it is, I've found it works very well in quite a few, and I'm very happy with it. Up here is my armadillo. It's showing up slightly differently on screen than it is on the page. It's a little bit more gray in real life than this, but both shades are absolutely lovely. Um, I just think it's a great, great color. I like it a lot, and it's working very, very well in my extra fine uh, SD nib. Definitely one that I'm going to look forward to playing with this month. Right below that is one of my go-to shimmer inks, Ferris Wheel Press's Blushing Mushroom. I adore this thing. You can see the shimmer everywhere and it doesn't clog, at least in my experience. I've had very good luck with this particular ink and I I generally don't have problems. I've put it in fine Twisby nibs. I've put it in... Um, some fairly broad nibs. It doesn't clog the feed. It's just, it's very well behaved. And that's not always my experience with Ferris wheel press inks. So definitely high praise from me for this particular color. Right below that is Sailor Shikiori Yozakura. I adore this color. It's got a little bit of that sort of dusky purpley pink with a little hint of red in there. I love the way it looks in uh, this medium fine nib, but it you can see there's a fair amount of shading even in this medium fine, which of course writes very finely indeed, uh, but definitely a gorgeous color. And right below that is my misnomer chocolate ink from Robert Oster. I think this is a gorgeous color, just just beautiful, just a stunner. Uh, and it looks really well in my uh, cola colorway from Esther Brooke in that SD with that journaler nib. It's just, just a really beautiful, beautiful shade of ink. So if you are looking for kind of like that burgundy Bordeaux shade, um, don't be led astray by the chocolate name. It is not particularly brown. It is very much a beautiful, beautiful reddish toned ink, and I absolutely love it. So there you have my currently inked for April. If you happen to have any questions about any of these colors, if you have any comments about any of these colors and how they've worked out for you, please do feel free to pop those in the comments and share. Always love talking about inks. If you have any thoughts about the pens or anything else, please also feel totally free to pop those in the comments as well. Uh, if I have not gotten to comments that you've put in the last video, I apologize. I've been out of town for about uh, the last week, so I'm a little bit behind, but definitely very excited to get back into the swing of things. And hopefully this was a fun video for you to watch. Now, speaking of, if this video were in, was in any way useful, entertaining, interesting, please do consider hitting that like button or potentially even subscribing to the channel. Now, as always, thank you so, so much for joining me. Uh, and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.